Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, another justice recuses himself from the UWP's elections petitions matter. A $2.3 million emergency shelter, the first of its kind, opens in Layu, and the Ministry of Agriculture focused on boosting local produce exports. The details coming up. to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. First up in the news, another development in the UWP elections petitions matter. Dominica News Online is reporting that Justice Eddie Ventus, who was recently assigned to hear the election petition striking out matter, has recused himself. Ventus is believed to have worked in the AG's office in an advisory capacity three years ago. Recently, a team of local lawyers wrote to the Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court of Justice that is Justice Janice Pereira expressing court concern over a letter from the Attorney General to the Chief Justice on the election petitions matter. Attorney Singula Bloomquist Williams, John Eliu Charles, Joel Paris, Ronald Charles, Joshua Francis and Bernard Wilshire complained to the Chief Justice about the Attorney General's letter in which they claim he challenged the suitability of Justice Wynant Adrian Roberts to preside over the elections petitions hearing. The attorneys quote the AG's letter in which he objects to Ju Justice Adrian Roberts presiding over the petition's matter saying, and I quote, her ladyship would be familiar with persons who are interested in these petitions and application to strike, end quote. The concerned lawyers say the AG must be reminded that there is a presumption of impartiality on the part of a sitting judge that she will be faithful to her oath. The attorneys say, absent that, the judge has a right to sit in the cases assigned to her and ought not to recuse for trivial reasons. They claim mere suspicion of bias is not enough and that a real possibility must be demonstrated on the available evidence. The Ministry of Agriculture has registered a spike in ginger and turmeric exports. That disclosure by the Minister for Agriculture who says what's being exported now is mainly traditional crops. The yams, the cassava, the dashi, and green bananas, plantain. But interestingly, during the COVID period, we have seen a, a spike in terms of um, ginger and turmeric. You know, so that is, that is an area that the ministry is paying co close attention to. The minister believes there is also a demand for passion fruit, which fetches a much higher price when exported as pulp. So these are the areas that are um, in demand and exporting and producing in large quantities at the moment. But as it is now, the ministry um, with the partners at the Chinese mission are looking into different crops. As you indicated earlier, as it is now, we have a fully cultivated greenhouse with over 400 cantaloupe plants, which would be ready in about a month's time. I mean, the greenhouse may be 20 feet by 30 feet. And then from that greenhouse, if you were a commercial farmer, you would likely to yield somewhere in the region based on the price of the cantaloupe at, at the time between ten and $15,000 from that one greenhouse within two to three months because that's the time it takes to yield in terms of the cantaloupe. 
The general idea is to ensure that Dominica is secure in food production and as well for export. The Prime Minister says he is hard-pressed to understand why Dominicans still import certain produce. This watermelon came from Salisbury. This is from Hillary Shillen for the, a, a big farmer in Salisbury. I bought this from him and so forth. I mean, why are we buying watermelons from overseas and, and, and spending $400,000 in sending foreign exchange out to Dominica? You, you can you imagine $400,000 in the hand of Hillary Shillingford and others in Salisbury? Yep. I mean, so, so I believe that we in, um, we in Dominica, we need to watch our consumption practices. We can grow those things in Dominica. This is a watermelon. Um, though I have grown bigger ones than that in my family. <laughs> um, but, but, but this is the thing. I mean, we also, we have these um, this, this peppers. I have been told that this is about, what, $13 a pound? A pound, a pound, yes. 13? Three, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I mean, you have a knife or something? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I don't know. I mean, is a knife? I, I, it's $30 a pound on this thing. I mean, I want to see whether we have, we have gold dust. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in this peppers, I mean, this thing came caught. That thing was almost like robbery. I mean, I mean, yeah. I have seen much better qualities from this in our country. And so this is, I, I'm disappointed that there's no gold dust in this thing. Um, and I'm not even sure these things can grow. I mean, um, we have to, we really have to go into those areas and to see whether we can eliminate the need for imports into our country and and to get our farmers to benefit from this. The Ministry of Agriculture is working on a response to the demand for increased production of certain high-value produce. What we are looking to do is establish um, estate-type farms. So as it is, we are working now in collaboration with the Chinese. So what you will find is five to ten acres mm. with two to three crops that is available all year round. Mm. So as it is now, we have just about maybe seven greenhouses that we are going to install. We have, we have acquired the land. We have some preparation work to do. But in terms of making certain commodities, bell peppers, cantaloupes and so on available, we are going to tackle it with an estate type farm. Um, so what you will find is a group of young people who would be owners of the estate would be working mm. to produce these specialized crops. And of course, with the Ministry of Agriculture, along with the Chinese mission, would be providing the technical assistance that they need. So we're not just going to give it to them. We're going to work with them until they have come established farmers. But I, I, I want to, I would like to support you on this because the concern we have had is that sometimes you have $10 and you spread it too thin and you don't see the impact. I think we need to focus on a few farmers empower them with these crops, see how it goes and see if we can expand it. So yeah, I, that is this, I, I believe this is a, a, a wonderful way to go. The first of its kind, an over $2.3 million emergency shelter officially opened in the village of Layou. Andrea Louis has more. The Layou Emergency Shelter and Resource Center was conceptualized after Hurricane Maria as a means to provide safe shelter for residents of the area in times of disaster. The structure, which is in keeping with the updated building codes of the country, will be able to house over 100 people comfortably, as well as provide cooking, washing and medical facilities for shelterees. Minister for Public Works Kasani Laville says all effort went into ensuring the design of the building guaranteed the safety of those who will use it. Improved resilience in the water supply by the inclusion of a water tank with a supporting water harvesting strategy and improve improvements to the safety and security of users of restrooms, which was motivated by feedback from previous use of various shelters around the island and the region. As a consequence of the design review which occurred during the construction period, example, structural steel members and so on, which were ordered to have been changed in the sizing with resulting increases in weight and cost. Changes also had to be made to the foundation to accommodate the heavier loading. Member of Parliament for the St. Joseph constituency, Dr. Addis King, wants to see constituents utilize the multipurpose building as a means to earn income and develop skills. I look forward to the commencement of programs here in this facility as it is also intended to be used as a resource center. Several skill training programs in key areas are being developed for the young people of this area. This is in an effort to continue empowering our youth 
to prepare them for the job market or as self-employed individuals. I urge you, the young people among us today and those listening via social media, to take full advantage of these opportunities as they become available. Your future depends on your desire to achieve. Prime Minister Skerritt says the state of the art emergency shelter and resource center will serve the people of Layu well. No doubt it will enhance the aesthetics of Layu, but very importantly, it will assure greater safety to the residents of Layu in the event of a natural disaster. Layu, because of its location, is a vulnerable community. This is why this government very early on decided that we would have given special attention and consideration to Layu in ensuring its safety by building this facility, um, not only for difficult periods, but also opportunities for training, um, skills development, so that we can have an economic aspect or economic benefit uh, from the presence of this facility. The contractor on this project, Roy C. Real Estate and Construction Company, and the subcontractor, Sorrel Consulting Limited, are both local companies. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Government is taking a multi-pronged approach to addressing a lack of reliable farm labor and work ethic. Labor is a critical aspect of agriculture production and the absence of a reliable workforce means higher labor costs for farmers. The issue of labor is something that the ministry has been paying special attention to because several farmers have complained to the ministry as it relates to the cost and the availability of farm labor. Um, due to the shortage, we have seen a skyrocket in terms of the price of farm labor. So the ministry's response to that through the World Bank project, what we have been doing is providing a lot of tools. So we have augers, we have tillers, we have um, swipers. So this eliminates a lot of manual labor that the farmer would require. Mm -hmm. Also, what we are doing is we are looking at um, doing a small unit um, in terms of mechanized machinery, um, mm -hmm. large tractors and so on. Um, we will be receiving a donation in a few months time from the Chinese mission in terms of small equipment that the different regional offices could then provide to the farmer. In addition to the, the donation from the Chinese mission, we as a ministry will be purchasing our own tools in terms of mechanizing the farm operations. But in terms of the cost of labor, um, we have been speaking with the labor division. We have spoken to the Attorney General's chamber because what we recognize is that good labor sometimes could run you $120 per day. And that is the price that is set by the labor award, not by any institution or by any standard. Mm. So that is something that we are reviewing with the support of the Labor Division and the Attorney General's Chambers. The Ministry of Agriculture is also reviewing the operations of the National Abattoir, which was intended to address a shortfall in affordable pork and poultry products. We have um, reviewed the operations at the Abattoir. We have, we have noted some some challenges in terms of the cost. As it is mm. now in Dominica, we don't have an hatchery. So we import the chicks. Uh, we don't have a feed plant, so we import the feed. Uh, it's important to note that as it is now, in terms of duties on the feed, what you have is 3% environmental charge and the 1.5%. So there's no VAT, there's no import duty on the feed. But what we realize is that the farmer does not have the capacity to purchase a container of feed. So they purchase it in small portions. Mm. So what we are looking to see is how the abattoir could get involved in purchasing the chicks and the feed mm. and subsidizing the price to the farmers because that would lead to a reduction in the cost per pound of the poultry and the pork as well. There have been complaints that the abattoir in some instances has been tardy in meeting its obligations to suppliers. Payment to farmers was a challenge in terms of the, um, the government machinery in terms of payment. Um, as it is now up to March, we have paid all farmers in full. Mm. And we have recognized the challenges that we have and we have just completed a review of our entire processes in terms of the time a farmer gets paid from the time that he, we would have picked up his animals from his farm. So we should see some improvement within the next financial year as early as July. But, but, we, but don't we have an impressed account at the abattoir that they have the, 
that they can write checks directly to the farmers? That's, that's how we operate as it speaks. Agro-processors provide key support for farmers and there is ongoing work to facilitate those facing challenges in that sector. Agro-processors follow with the Ministry of Trade, but we have been discussing bilaterally in terms of how it is that we can provide assistance. And we have recognized that the machinery and the availability of machinery is an issue. So we are discussing that as we speak in terms of how government can assist. We are also reviewing in terms of um, the duties, but I, I would like to tell the agro-processors out there that the Ministry of Agriculture under the Farmer Incentive Program, we do provide assistance to agro-processors because we recognize the agro-processors provide a critical role to our farmers in terms of the consumption of production and in other cases when there is excess production. So we are reviewing in terms of the agro-processors and in terms of the import duties and the availability of machinery. The Prime Minister believes small business owners ought to avail themselves of the fiscal incentives provided by government. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. Construction on two regional emergency shelters to begin soon. The announcement from Minister for National Security, Ribbon Blackmore, when speaking at the handing over of the Layu Emergency Shelter and Resource Center on Monday. Mr. Blackmore says these shelters will benefit hundreds of Dominicans who live in vulnerable areas. Soon, and I'm, I'm very happy, soon two additional shelters will commence. One in Jimit, of course, Jimit in my constituency, and the other one in Casibus. And we know the Casibus area is also a very vulnerable area, so that's very important. And this, we have the capacity to, to accommodate 500 and 400 persons, respectively. That is very significant. As regards the safety and security of Dominicans during the 2020 hurricane season, the National Security Minister says he is pleased with the number of resilient houses which have been handed over to citizens, which in turn will reduce their dependence on emergency shelters. Now that we are in the 2020 hurricane season, it is even more critical that we increase shelter capacity. And added to that, our government, your government, is providing hundreds of resilient homes over the past year in this beautiful country. Let us not forget that. As you're aware, your government, the people's government, continues to provide modern resilient structures for dwelling purposes in several communities throughout this beautiful country, Dominica. Just last week, 322 Dominicans in the most vulnerable parts of this country received keys to resilience home in this country. A renewed call to farmers to take advantage of the World Bank's fund, World Bank funded agriculture project. Here is Andrea Louis with details. Components of the multi-million dollar project started in 2019 and continue into this year. Product manager within the project implementation unit of this internationally funded program, Kevin Stevenson, says there are several reasons why farmers refuse to apply for assistance under this program. Apart from land authorization issues, farmers have not applied, some of them for political reasons. They have felt that um, 
for ex in certain in the office, they have felt that they, sh they would not participate. But when they saw farmers benefiting and they realized it's a real program, and some of their friends, they decided, okay, yeah, we need to apply. So political reasons, other reasons, some farmers were disgruntled, were not getting cash advance after Hurricane Maria. So they felt, oh, I didn't get cash, so I'm not part of that program. That program is not a program, that's not for me. Now they had cash again, so they now realize, no, I don't want to lose out on cash again. The project manager highlighted improved communication as one method of reaching a wider number of farmers. And again, not bashing our communications, but the traditional method of communication don't seem to be reaching 100% people. There are still a genuine amount of people that did not know about the project. So despite the radio and the GIS and the YouTube, there are still people out there in their bushes with no access to communication that comes down to tongue now and then. And then because of the news going along more aggressively, they would now hear that there is a program that they can participate in. So we have to look at our means of coverage. How do we reach more people apart from just the traditional means of YouTube, GIS, etc.? Once the main concerns have been addressed, the number of farmers expressing interest in the program grew. These are the main reasons why people have not participated. Political reasons, they did not know, in lack of information, or disgruntled because of previous programs not participating. So essentially right now, we have over 500 plus farmers who are now showing interest for taking part in the program. helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. Another justice recuses himself from the UWP's elections petitions matter. A $2.3 million emergency shelter, the first of its kind, opens in Layu. And the Ministry of Agriculture focused on boosting local produce exports. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.